it depends with your arrangement. Okay. If you're lucky enough to find a broker who's uh, offering the services to you for free, managing your property. Kasi kung yung tenant naman is not a problematic tenant, wala naman masyadong complaints, no? and your unit is still in a relatively good condition, wala pa masyadong mga repairs na kailangan gawin, then okay lang, diba? That you don't hire a full-time property manager. Your broker can do it for you kasi kung minor unit repairs lang, then they will just have to call the admin office, diba? To do the repairs. But if major unit repairs, yun yung challenge, diba? Kasi there are times where it, they will need to have the signature of the landlord to, to do the repair. When you're buying condos, it's all about rental yields. But over the past few years, we have seen property prices go up in the metro. That actually means that your rental yield will actually drop. In this video, we're going to talk about how can you get 5% rental yields in Metro Manila with our guest, Property King founder, Ramon King. So enjoy the video. Getting a 5% rental yield here in Manila is actually quite challenging right now. There's not a lot of ideal locations where you can get that type of yield. So if you look at BGC Makati, you'd be very lucky to find properties that would give you the yield as of this moment because property prices have really gone up to such levels that would only allow for about 2% to 3% yield. Gross pa lang yun. But if you're looking for something that would give you 5%, I would strongly suggest properties in Mandaluyong. Mandaluyong condominiums have the potential to yield about 5% gross. Let's say, for example, you get a property for about 6 to 7 million, a one bedroom unit in, in Mandaluyong, and you rent it out for about 20 to 25,000. Then that could give you that amount of yield per year. Pero that's only on a gross yield basis. If you compute it, let's say 12 months at 20,000 is how much, right? 20,000 times 12 is 240,000. If you compute all of the dues, we are not It's a 5%, to be honest, right? Because you have to deduct your association dues, which could vary from three to 5,000 pesos per month. You can also do it in the same way. You also have your property taxes. Every year you have to pay. If you're renting it out, let's say you hire the services of a real estate broker or agent, one month out of one year is usually the commission or the fee okay. for these agents. So, bawas sa yung kakain ng sa sa yield mo. And then you also have to allocate at least, siguro at the most, mga one month uh, for incidentals. Maybe there's problems with your tenant, may nasira, diba? Tapos you weren't able to cover it from your deposits. You also have to allocate the fund for that. Property management, if you're not based here in the Philippines and you're asking someone to do it for you, there's also a fee for that. You really have to pay that. So that way, eat from your yield, your rental yield. It depends with your arrangement. Okay. If you're lucky enough to find a broker, who's uh, offering the services to you for free, managing your property. Kasi kung yung tenant naman is not a problematic tenant, wala naman masyadong complaints, no? and your unit is still in a relatively good condition, wala pa masyadong mga repairs na kailangan gawin, then okay lang, diba? That you don't hire a full-time property manager. Your broker can do it for you kasi kung minor unit repairs lang, then they will just have to call the admin office, diba? To do the repairs. But if major unit repairs, yun yung challenge, diba? Kasi there are times where it, they will need to have the signature of the landlord to, to do the repair. And then there's a bond. Uh, some condos would require you to pay a bond. So having a property manager that would do it for you and appointing them with a special power of attorney uh, will help to uh, make the process a lot more easier. Especially if you're based on road or if you're very busy, you don't have the time to do it yourself then you may need to hire the services of a property manager. So, kung gagawin mo yun, if you have multiple properties, then it would be wise to have a property manager. At this point right now, because rental rates haven't really recovered pre-pandemic levels, 2019 levels, wala pa tayo sa rates na But the prices continue to go up. So in BGC and Makati kasi, before, before the pandemic, in 2019, rental rates have been really very high no? because of the good economy that we had. Back then, we have a lot of POCOs in terms of Philippine records, right? especially in the 
in previous years. No? Um, medyo mataas talaga. Before kasi, for the longest time, rental rates in Makati and BGC would range from 800 to 1,000 per square meter. Pero during that time, when the Pogos were still here, we were experiencing as high as 1,400 per square meter. They're willing to pay that. Iba pa nga, they pay one year in advance. But when the pandemic came and the Pogos left, diba, talagang nagkaroon ng ano, gap no, in terms of demand. And because there's a lot of turnover condos, as we speak right now, because during the time that uh, during the golden age of the that in real estate uh, before, and there are developers na nag uh, tayo ng mga condos uh, in, in Makati, BGC, in the Bay Area, even in Anaba. So there's uh, a lot of supply of condos right now. So that's eating away from rental prices. So medyo bumabagal. Correct siya because there's uh, oversupply, I would say, of condos. If your intention is for capital appreciation, uh, okay pa rin. Eh, capital appreciation steady naman every year. It's still increasing. In fact, there was a new property launched by a uh, uh, high-end developer here in, in BGC. And I was surprised. No? I, I myself was uh, quite pessimistic. Uh, at uh, 350,000 per square when they launched it. And I was surprised that na, it's uh, A lot of buyers really bought it. So it really depends on the product, who's a developer. So, pwede pa rin talagang tumaas yung value ng property. And that goes to show that uh, Filipinos still have the money to invest. You just, just need to make sure that the product that you're investing in has the, umaga, the qualities of, uh, of a good real estate development. So, kung capital appreciation yung hapon mo, and not just the rentals, then it would make sense. Kasi kung rental ang purpose mo, it will take you a long time to recover your investment, to be honest. The problem is the who will rent those units? Alabang or QC, di ba? So, alabang yung QC kasi, though it's booming, di ba? There's a lot of development happening there. I wouldn't say it's a, parang a developed central business district where there's a lot of, you know, multinational corporations, a lot of local companies na talaga hiring multiple people to rent these particular units. Yung QC and heavily supported by BPO companies. Di ba? So, and the Bogos when they were saved here. So ngayon, the question is, who will rent? Yes, you get the property at a lower price, pero are you able to rent it out at the price you want? Diba? And even if you lower the price, gano'ng katagal yung vacancy? Kasi mapakante ka lang ng 2-3 months, ang laking impact na yan sa, sa, sa yield.